Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves out there, my friends. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. And if you can't tell based on some of the different kind of videos I've done recently, I'm in a little bit of a mode, I guess, mood, mode, whatever, where um, I'm trying to be a better photographer. I'm trying to be a better, better editor. And so for me, that's a couple of different things. Number one, that's using different products to expand my skill set. That doesn't mean I'm getting away from products I've used traditionally because I'm not, but it helps me learn new, or I should say learning new products helps me become a better editor, even in the products that I may not be reviewing in that video. In other words, it broadens my knowledge and helps me get better at doing things overall which is good for me and hopefully good for the community as I learn things and can share them. Um, and secondly, I'm also trying to explore subject matter that I don't necessarily always explore. Um, this video is a prime example of that. This video is my first impression um, of Portrait AI 2021 from On One. I've got On One Photo Raw 2020 and 2021 is coming out soon, but recently they came out with uh, Portrait AI 2021, which as I understand it, is their for first foray into using AI, and it's around portraits. So I love AI. I think it's a great addition to your arsenal to help you do things more easily and more quickly, and perhaps more accurately, but also, I just think it's fun, to be honest. It's cool to have new tools and new toys and things like that. So I'm plotting down the path of, of exploring and learning, and I'm jumping into this product today to give you my first impression. I've edited a few photos. I've played around with a little bit. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm just going to be clear. And if you've been here before, you know portraits are not my primary thing that I shoot. But going back to the beginning of this video, I'm trying real hard, my friends. I want to be more well-rounded, which is really what I'm trying to accomplish here. So let's jump into it. Um, and I'm sorry, you've got me in the talking head video. You've got a photo of me you're looking at. But this is the interface for Portrait AI 2021. On the right-hand side, of course, you've got various sliders that allow you to manipulate the image. So you've got some different things that you can do here. I'm just kind of going through this kind of quickly. But uh, you can see here there's skin retouching. You can drag it to the right to increase that. If you click the Details tab, you'll see that you just got uh, several more sliders where you can come in here. And to be honest, like this is not an in-depth tutorial because I think some of these are fairly... Uh, straightforward. Um, I will tell you there's two different modes. There's surface blur and there's frequency separation. Again, not being a portrait guy, I will tell you my opinion is surface blur is a little bit more, as the name implies, it's blurring the surface and kind of smoothing the skin. But frequency separation is what you hear a lot about in Photoshop, for example. And it's a technique that basically allows you to smooth the skin without giving up all of the texture so it doesn't dehumanize or make the person look plastic. It's, as I view it, a more advanced technique. It's built in here. I'm going to use that option because I think it's very good and allows you to maintain that realism that I think most people are looking for in most portraits most of the time. You know, there's obviously different kinds of portraits where you can get into some odd and different odds. Sounds derogatory. I don't mean it that way, but just um, unique. Uh, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, non-traditional kind of looks, um, and that's fine too. So blemishes, you know, again, you can just drag these to the right. I want to maintain a little bit of detail. I want some smoothing, uh, maybe take a little bit of shine off of my face. Uh, the brightness, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's a little too dark. I want to brighten the face. What I'm noticing is that upper, uh, in the photo that you're looking at, in the upper left side, which is my upper right forehead, um, it didn't really brighten much there. I think that's okay. Um, if I go all the way here to 100, I think there's too much light right there. So I think it's probably better to do something a little more um, gentle, I guess for lack of a better word. And I think it blends in nicely and looks fine. Slim face always comes in handy. Um, if I'm looking at myself, I'd like to do that. Notice it doesn't recognize my left eye because there's not one. It's covered by my camera. And my right eye, I can increase or decrease the size. Note that even if I go to 100, it doesn't really look over the top. It might look a little bit big, but it's not some bulging, like bug eye kind of crazy look at 100. I would probably do something a little bit more subtle, but I think that's uh, really cool that um, even at the extreme, it doesn't really just ruin the portrait for you. Um, eyes, you've got whitening, detail, dark circles, and brow enhancement, but you've also got this eye tool. If you click on that and then come over here, you can see it it basically says, here's what I think the eye is. You can take this blue dot, move it all around. You can take these little dots and kind of expand the scope of where you consider the eye to be, 
which is what I'm doing here, just to kind of make my eye a little bit bigger. There you go, so I've um, isolated the eye. I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna say whiten. Let's go ahead and add some whitening to that. Uh, maybe detail, which is gonna be like a little bit like clarity, a little bit of crispness there, like in the center of the eye. Let's remove that dark circle for sure and brow enhance. You know, my eyebrows are fairly lightly colored and they're really thin. Usually um, when I'm trying to enhance eyebrows in this product or like in Luminar in their photo tool, um, it doesn't really work on me. It's, uh, it just doesn't pick up my eyebrows. So that's not a fault of on one. That's just a fault of my eyebrow. Um, and then in the mouth, you've got teeth whitening, no teeth are showing, lip vibrance, brightness, and you can adjust the hue. So if for some reason you were doing something unique or different, you could change the hue. You also have the same thing as you do with the eyes, and that is the mouth tool. You can click on that, and you can see that it's auto-selected where the mouth is. And then, once again, you can come in here and make adjustments accordingly. I'll make a couple of small ones here, but, uh, you know, my, my upper lip is kind of thin. Maybe I'll pull that back a little bit. Um, anyway, maybe I'll say lip vibrance, and it kind of isolates that area, and maybe lip brightness. Maybe I'll brighten that a little bit. Anyway, there it is. So let me show you the preview. Um, there's the before. You know, and that's the thing. It's like as you're doing it, it doesn't seem like it's making a whole lot of changes, but even small stuff incrementally added and added and added to itself does add up. So there's the original photo, and there's the current state. I think we made quite a difference. Let me show you a couple of more examples. So here's something I wanted to show you. It's multiple people. You can see that it's automatically finding faces. And if you'll notice over here on the... Uh, on the editing tab, you've got four different faces. You can click on them and edit them individually. That's really cool. So let's say we start with this person on the far left. I might come over here, do a tiny bit of retouching and brighten her face just a little bit, something like that. I'll go to the second one. I'll click on that person. It gives me a new set of tools. And you can see the one that I did in the bottom um, is the one on the far left. It has the photo of her. And you can see it's a little white dot, which is basically showing you the mask of where it's applying the edits from that first uh, go round here. I'm gonna say a tiny bit of retouching, tiny bit of brightness. I'm gonna just do the same thing because I feel like I've already demoed the tools to you. There we go, I'm gonna go click on the third one. And uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll say a little bit less brightness. Maybe the light's too bright on that person. Um, and then you know, maybe slim face, maybe I'll just do some eyes or something. Just, just kind of playing around, doesn't matter. Uh, and then once again, I'm gonna click on this fourth face. Um, and maybe add a little bit of brightness there. And there we go. So let me show you this preview window. I'll do it the sliding uh, and I'll start on the far left side. So there you go. You can see that face has changed. This one is a little bit brighter. This one a little bit uh, darker actually because I darkened it and then increased the eyes a little bit. And then over here, this one's a little bit brighter. And so I can turn that off of course. And oops, uh, let me get the preview and just turn that off. There it is before. And there it is after. And I think that's really cool that it found four faces. It gave me four different instances of the tool to go work on these faces individually. And of course, I could, although I'm not here, but I could go through and edit each of them individually with custom edits for that person's face in that group shot. So I have no idea how many people you can do in a group shot, but here I just did four. I've done it with two and I've done it with four. That's pretty amazing to me that it auto detects those, it gets them right, and your edits are applying accurately in that mask that it auto creates. So I'm pretty excited about that for portrait folks. If you're doing like a family shot, you can, or a wedding shot, you can get multiple faces at the same time without having to go add new layers and all that kind of stuff. Very cool, very interesting. Let me show you a couple more. Okay, once again, here's a pair of people. Here's an example with two faces, in other words. And this was at a uh, like a, a meetup, basically, where I was taking portraits of these people, as were a bunch of other photographers. This is a group of people that get together here in Austin. Um, so there we go. There's uh, these two people that were modeling. You can see it auto-detected their faces. I'm going to give a little bit of brightness to her, um, maybe a tiny bit of slim face, maybe a little bit of left eye and right eye. And then maybe I'll come down here to eye whitening and eye detail. Um, and now I'm going to pop over to his face. So again, you just go click on the second face. I also like the way they do it, which makes perfect sense, is they're lined up in that uh, panel in the order that they appear from left to right in the photo. So here I'm going to take a little bit of brightness on his face. I just want to be gentle because it, might, uh, it has a little bit of shine on it. So in fact, that's a good reason to go up here to details and uh, find the shine and slide that to reduce that shine a little bit. So 
increase the brightness but decrease the shine which is helpful uh, his eyes are closed i don't need to worry about any eye stuff there but lip vibrance maybe a little bit and let me just show you the preview so let me click on that there it is before in other words preview off no edits applied to the photo and here it is after a little bit of enhancement a very subtle very natural i think and i think it looks great by the way, you've got other tools over here. So you've got retouching tools. Uh, you've got cropping tools. So if you want to crop the photo or do some retouch, like maybe there's this little blemish on his hand, you want to get rid of that quick, easy to do. A lot of fun, very powerful tool. I have one more example. Let me show you this one last example. So just an iPhone selfie in the backyard recently. I was just kind of playing around, taking some shots. So there we go. Um, there it is without um, any retouching. Uh, but I can come in here and do the kind of things that I like to do. Let's say I got blemishes. Let's say I don't want a lot of detail. Let's say I want a high level of smoothing because I'm getting older and I want to hide those wrinkles from you people. Uh, maybe I want to brighten my skin a little bit. Um, here's the thing I wanted to point out. If you look at left eye and right eye, left eye in the photo, now again, it's basically a mirrored image. So the left eye uh, of me, which is on the right side of this photo, it's not being detected. I'm kind of squinting. I'm doing like a, hey, like a, I don't know, a crazy pirate grimace or something. But if you will notice, it's not detecting my left eye. It's closed. It's lidded, I guess. It's basically halfway closed. It's not picking it up. So I can adjust the size of the right eye. You can see that. Um, I'm going to take that back. So I don't really need to do that. But I was kind of surprised because it's so accurate that um, it's just not picking things out. If I click on this tool, it doesn't give me the option to apply it. So this is a first impression video. I have not spent a lot of time. I don't know if I can go in manually and make it recognize that eye. Let me try just dragging this over and see how that works. This is a live demo, my friends. Um, I don't know if this will work or not, but let's see. Yeah, see left eye, it's not working, and right eye, uh, interesting. That's pretty cool. So it didn't recognize my left eye, but I took the um, the little uh, eyeball tool, whatever you call it, and moved it from one eye to the other. And it still doesn't recognize the left eye, but because the right eye tool I moved over, I can now increase my left eye with the right eye slider. Kind of weird. doesn't actually uh, help the photo a lot. My eyes is just way too like crazy pirate looking. But I thought that was kind of interesting. So, um, we're discovering things live, my friends, and that's the fun, frankly, of doing a first impression video. I don't want to come in here and say, I've mastered the tool, let me teach it to you. I want to come in here because you might be like me and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing something with this tool. I'm thinking about getting it or whatever. What's it like? How easy is it for me to use? And that's what my first impression videos are like. I want to show what it's like to jump in here without a lot of knowledge about it and try it out. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, teeth whitening, I could always take that. Lip vibrance, blah, blah, blah. You get it. That's kind of it. The eye thing was pretty interesting on this one. I was interested that it didn't recognize my left eye because it's kind of halfway closed. And I was really curious that I was able to take that eye tool, move it over, and then use the right eye slider to adjust my left eye. Maybe that'll come in handy in some of your edits. I don't know, my friends. Um, but this is On One Portrait AI 2021. It's a standalone app. Works as a plugin from like Apple Photos. Um, it's going to be, as I understand it, embedded in On One Photo Raw 2021, which is coming out soon. I'll put links to these down below. Those are affiliate links. Obviously, you're under no obligation to use my links. But if you do, it helps me out if you end up buying something. And if not, that's cool too. I'm going to still be here making videos. Um, but On One... Photo Raw 2021 is coming out pretty soon. I'll probably do a first impression video of that as well. I like the On One tools. To be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time using them in the last uh, number of months, uh, six, eight months. Um, but I'm trying to broaden my horizons, get back into editing with a lot of tools, and um, share my experiences here with you folks, my friends. So that was my first impression of On One Portrait AI 2021. Cool tool. I definitely give it a thumbs up. I like it. Um, I think it's got a lot of capability, and I also like, I think the best thing about it for me, uh, number one, a couple of best things about it, the eyeball and, and how you can go pick those and adjust them, same with the mouth, and also that even though you drag things significantly to, uh, to the right, you don't get an over-the-top sort of edit. So I think for professional portrait photographers, wedding photographers, people like that, this is going to be a great tool. For me, I can see myself using it for family photos, which is more of the portraits I take. It's going to be more like casual portraits, not professional, but regardless of what your use case is, 
It's a great tool. Um, I hope it helps. That's my first impression of On One Portrait AI 2021. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon, and adios.